Welcome to the Mercer Online Orientation. This archive presentation presents the critical information that you will need to get started in taking your online course. The orientation is divided up into two sections. The first is a presentation on best practices in taking online courses and an introduction to the basic concepts of online courses. The second section is an actual walkthrough of what you will see inside of your online course. So let's begin. The first portion is a section that we like to call fact or fiction. During this section, we'll present a series of questions and we'll have you decide whether you think they're fact or fiction. And then once you've made your decision, the video will continue and you can see whether you were right or perhaps maybe you were mistaken. So here we go. The first question. Online courses are a walk in the park. They're much easier than face-to-face -face courses. Do you think this is true? Think it's a fact? Or do you think it's fiction? It is fiction. Online courses are not a walk in the park and they are not easier than your traditional face-to-face -face courses. Why is that? Well, in your traditional face-to-face -face course, you're expected to walk into a classroom and listen to an instructor for a set period of time. The, after you have listened to the instructor for that period of time, you take your assignments, you go home, you do your readings from your text work, you complete your homework assignments, and then you come back into class, turn in your homework, and once again listen to the instructor as they give lecture. In an online class, it doesn't work like that. In an online class, you're responsible for taking in all of the material. You're responsible for doing all the readings. You're responsible for making sure that you watch all the lectures or watch all of the associated materials, be they on other websites or inside of your online class platform. You're responsible for taking in all of that stuff as well as completing any of your course assignments. So, your online course is actually probably going to take you more time and may be more complicated than a traditional face-to-face -face course. Next question. In order to get credit for your online course, you must be logged in at a specific time and remain logged in for a predetermined amount of time. This, my friends, is fiction. You do not have to be logged in at a specific time for your online course. You do not have to stay logged in for any preset amount of time. You can log in at any point, day or night, into your online course and complete your course assignments. However, you will need to make sure that you're mindful of the deadlines and do complete your assignments by the date they're due. Online courses are not work at your own pace. There are set assignment due dates. Typically, the way it works is an instructor will post up a list of assignments that need to be completed at the beginning of the week and will give you deadlines by which you need to complete the assignments. So usually, on Sunday evening, you'll be able to log into your class and see everything that you need to do for the following week. And the instructor will have due dates associated with the items. They may say, you know, read chapter two out of your textbook and post to a discussion forum by Wednesday, and then respond to two posts in the discussion forum by Friday, and then maybe take a quiz by Saturday. And as long as you're mindful of these deadlines and stay up to date with the work, everything goes well. The problem is, when you start falling behind, it's really, really difficult to get caught back up. So the key is, log into your online course and make sure that you stay mindful of the deadlines presented by your instructor. So the third question, for an online course, you only need to log in once a week and that's it. The rest of the time, you're free to stare idly out the window or play video games. Fact or fiction? Why, but of course that's fiction. As I said in the previous slide, you need to log in regularly into your online course and stay on top of your work. Logging in once a week is not going to do the trick. You need to log in regularly and make sure that no new assignments have been posted, that no due dates have been changed, and also to make sure that you're staying on top of the discussions that are occurring inside of your course discussion forum. Speaking of logging in regularly, you must log in during the first week of class and complete relevant coursework. Otherwise, you will be withdrawn from the course. Again, I say unto thee, you must log into your class during the first week of class and complete relevant coursework. 
Otherwise, you will be withdrawn. These are federal regulations by which we are bound, and uh, your teacher is required to withdraw you if you have not done relevant coursework within the first week of class. So make sure that you log in and you follow the instructions that your uh, professor gives you and complete the assignments during that first week of class. Otherwise, you will be dropped and you will lose your money. The next section is about some of the technical things that you may want to know about your online class. The first is web browsers. Mercer Online supports four web browsers, Firefox, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, and Safari. You can use any of these four web browsers and know in confidence that your online course will function as uh, expected. We do have a couple of caveats though. Older versions of Safari, older versions of Internet Explorer, version uh, 7 and earlier of Internet Explorer, will not function properly with your online course. Also, if you're using Windows 8 and are using Internet Explorer version 10, you will experience some issues. If you encounter any issues with your web browser, try downloading and installing the Firefox web browser or the Google Chrome web browser to your computer, and that should correct the issues. If you have a mobile device, you can download and install the Blackboard Mobile Learn app. Be mindful though, this is not a free app and the app will not give you complete access to everything for your course. It merely provides some additional enhancements to the course so that uh, you can access course materials in your discussion forums through the app uh, rather than through the browser. Our recommendation, however, is try using the browser on your mobile device first. If you find that it's inadequate or it just simply doesn't do the job for you, then you might want to move on and try the app, which is available on Google Play or inside of the Apple App Store. So, what if you can't access a test or you need a new browser or if you click on a link and something nothing happens or something really wonky happens when you click on something or you can't submit your work or you have some other question or you can't log in, what do you do? Well, what do you think? Here you go. You can always contact the Mercer Online team. Our physical office is located in room CM120 on the West Windsor campus, and our telephone number is 609-570-3389. However, the absolute best way to get in touch with us is via email. You can email us at merceronline at mccc.edu. All emails sent to that address, at that address are forwarded to four individuals, and we respond to the emails as quickly as we can. We do not promise 24-7 support, however, we do try to check emails during the evenings and on weekends, so if you are having a critical issue, send us an email and we will get back to you as quickly as possible. If you send the email during the day, you can typically expect a response within an hour at the most. So let's talk about what goes on inside of the online classroom environment. One of the biggest questions we get is, do I still have to buy books for my online class? And the answer, of course, is yes. Just because your class takes place on the internet doesn't mean that you don't have to take, get textbooks for it. So to get your textbooks, you can purchase them from the Mercer Bookstore, which is available at mccc.bkstr.com, or by going through the MCCC website, which I'll show you in a moment. Or you can purchase your books from a third-party vendor. However, if you are planning on purchasing your books from a third-party source, check with your instructor first. Sometimes your online course will contain links and um, special codes that allow you to access certain publisher resources. If you purchase your textbook from a third party or purchase it used, you may find that you do not have access to these particular resources and you'll have to purchase that access separately, which could end up setting you back more than what it would have cost you in the first place. So make sure before you order your books from a third party vendor that you check with your instructor to make sure that that's an acceptable option. So I'm going to quickly show you how to order your books online from the Mercer Bookstore. If we go to www.mccc.edu, so load up the Mercer homepage. And we're going to come over to Student Services, or excuse me, Current Students, and go all the way down to the bottom to Bookstore. 
And this is going to take us to the Mercer Bookstore online. To see the textbooks that you need for your course, hover your mouse over Books, and then click on Textbooks and Course Materials. At this point, you'll want to navigate through a series of drop-down menus. The first one is Select Your Program. You're going to select West Windsor slash online slash non-credit. Even if you typically take your classes at James Kearney, you're going to want to select the West Windsor online non-credit option from this drop-down. Then select your term. Your term is the term for the course in which you're enrolled and you'll find that on your schedule. So I'm going to select Fall 2013. Then select your department. The department is the three letter code that begins the course name. So let's say I'm taking biology. I click on BIO and then select the course. I'm going to select Biology 106 and then the section. You can find your section number on your schedule or if you've logged into your online course you'll see the section number listed there within the course title. So in this example we're using Bio 106-010 as our section. So we click on the selection and hit submit and this will load up and tell us exactly what we need to purchase for our course. And you can purchase the textbooks right here and have them shipped to your home or you can purchase the textbooks here at the Mercer Bookstore and then stop by the bookstore on campus and pick up uh, your textbooks that you've ordered. So moving on, let's talk for a moment about plagiarism. We do have a five word policy on plagiarism here at Mercer County Community College and it's very simple. Click, drag, copy, paste, fail. And we're very serious about this. If you are caught stealing work that is written by someone else and presenting it as your own, you will fail your assignment. You will quite possibly fail the course. So don't steal somebody else's work and present it as your own. Let's face it. If your instructor is savvy enough to teach online, they're also savvy enough to do a search and find that you've stolen somebody else's work. So the best way to deal with it is just don't try it. Now, since you can't steal somebody else's work and present it as your own, where are you going to find good resources? Well, one place to go is the internet. You are in an online class and you could just search Google any term that you need to look up. Uh, you could always go to Wikipedia. But let's face it, Wikipedia may not be the best, most scholarly resource out there. And if you're writing something that requires scholarly research, you need to make sure you're using a good scholarly resource. So we we'll provide you with access to uh, library databases here at the Mercer County Community College Library. As a student, you have access to the library and all of its resources. And the best news is you don't have to go anywhere to access them. If you're doing academic research, go to the Mercer County Community website and go to the library. So here, let's go back to the Mercer County Community College homepage and I'm going to hover over Student Services and select Library Services. Now over here to the left, you'll see I have Online Databases. If I click on that, <clears throat> this will take me to a page which gives me a very long list of online databases for research. The materials in these databases are all peer-reviewed, professionally written articles written by people with all sorts of letters after their names and all sorts of great credentials, so they know what they're talking about. Feel free to use these resources as part of your research, but make sure that you cite your sources properly. Don't just copy and paste it and act like you wrote it. Make sure that you do the proper citation of your resources and everything will be fine. So next, let's talk about testing. There are going to be some tests in your online courses, obviously, because it is a college class. There's going to be some sort of testing. In most cases, you don't have to come to campus for any testing. However, some of your courses will require you to come onto campus for one or two tests during the semester. You'll need to ask your instructor for the details to find out if your class requires on-campus testing. And we do have some special instructions here for students who are enrolled in English 101 and English 102. There is a mandatory on-campus writing diagnostic that has to be completed before the end of the first week of class for English 101 and English 102. You'll find the prompt for your writing diagnostic inside of your course. So once you've logged into your course, you'll see that there is a topic for your writing diagnostic. 
read the topic. You can actually bring in a note card with some notes. You can't bring in anything with full sentences. You can give yourself an outline, but no rough drafts. Bring your notes into the testing center when you do the writing diagnostic, and then you have to write your paper inside of the testing center because they want to make sure that you are who you say you are. And that's how it works. And you have to get that done during the first week of class for English 101 and 102, or you will be withdrawn from the course by the instructor, no questions asked. So speaking of the testing center, if you do have to go on to the testing center to take any sort of tests, you must have your Mercer County Community College student ID. As it says here on the screen, no ID, no entry, no exceptions. We don't want you to stand in line outside of the testing center waiting to get in only to find out that they won't let you in because you don't have your student ID. Have to have the student ID. You can't have the driver's license, can't have your passport, can't have your mom, you can't have anything. You have to have a Mercer County Community College student ID in order to get into the testing center. So make sure that you have that when you go up to the testing center to do any testing that you may have to do. So how do you get that uh, student ID, stop by the security desk and uh, they'll take your picture and you can pick it up. Make sure you bring a photo ID and make sure that you bring a copy of your schedule when you go to get your student ID. So here's some other things. How do you find out what books you need? How do you contact the instructor? How do you get your syllabus? How do you figure out what it is you're supposed to be doing? How do you submit your assignments? Well, it's all inside of ANGEL, which of course leads us to the question, what is ANGEL? Angel is the online course platform in which all of your courses are housed. So Angel is the place you're going to log into to do all of your online coursework. So how do you think you're going to log into Angel? So here are your instructions. First step, go to mccc.angellearning.com. Second step, enter your username in first name dot last name format. And then enter your password, which is your date of birth in MMDDYY format, which means month, month, date, date, year, year format. So in the example that we have here, we're going to be logging in with a student named Johnny Student. So his name would be Johnny.Student. And then his password is his birth date, which is January 1st, 1990, which would translate in MMDDYY format to 010190. So let's go log into the online course environment and see what it's all about. To get there, if you go from the Mercer homepage, mccc.edu, if you come down to the very bottom of the screen, you'll see a series of things called quick links. Right in the middle, there's a link for Mercer Online. If you click on that, it'll take you to the Mercer Online homepage on the MCCC website. Then you want to click on Login Now, where it says click here to log into your online course. Click on that, and this will take you to the login page for your online course. I want to point out a few components of this page. On the right-hand side of the screen, there are public announcements. These announcements come directly from the Mercer Online team to you. These are things that we feel may be important to you. Things like if the system is going to be down or if uh, registration is open for a new semester, something like that. We will pass along that information to you. These, Again, these announcements come directly from the Mercer Online team to you and uh, they're just meant to provide you with you know, further information which may be critical to you. And if we scroll down the page, you'll see we have a welcome video here. Just in the event that you forget how to log in, we have a video which explains that. And then all of our contact information as well. Again, our location is room CM120 on the West Windsor campus. Our phone number is 609-570-3389. Our email address is merceronline at mccc.edu. And you can also like us on Facebook or you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, also, if you have a uh, iPad or an Android or an iPhone and you would like to get the Blackboard Mobile Learn app, there's a link right here which will take you to the Mercer Online to Go webpage and uh, the QR codes and links to the downloads are there. Also, if you need to get Microsoft Office, you can purchase it from Microsoft for a steeply discounted rate. Uh, there's a link right over here on the right which will take you to a Microsoft website which will allow you to purchase Microsoft Office at a significantly discounted rate. 
So I'm going to scroll back up the page. and want to point out a couple of other things. You'll notice here where it says Mercer Online 911. That's what we call a nugget. Uh, each of these little components are called nuggets, and they contain specific information. Mercer Online 911 is the nugget which contains links to some of the most commonly asked questions that we get here. And there are a lot of resources over here that you can always check out. And here at the top of the screen, you'll notice that we have the log on nugget. Uh, here, you're going to enter your username, which is your first name dot last name. In this instance, we're using a fellow named Johnny Student, so his username is Johnny dot Student. And your password is your date of birth in MMDDYY format. That's month, month, date, date, year, year. Johnny was born on January 1st, 1990, so his password would be 010190. And then once you've got your credentials entered in, you're just going to click the log on button. And this will take us into the online course environment. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll notice there's a nugget that says Courses. And inside of the Courses nugget will be a list of all of the courses to which you have access. For this demonstration, we have a course called Mercer Online Student Orientation. So I'm going to click on that, and this is going to take us into the course environment. The first thing you should notice when you log into your online course is that toward the top of the screen there are course announcements. These announcements are from your instructor to you. They will contain you know, critical information that the instructor wants you to know, step-by-step uh, -step instructions on what you need to do, etc. So here you see we have our instructor has given us a list of five different things that they want us to do to get started in the course. The first thing is to click on the course syllabus link. And right here, you'll see in the middle of the screen, there's a link that says Course Syllabus. This is where the syllabus is located in your course. It will not go anywhere. If you print it out and your child colors all over it, or eats it, or your dog eats it, or it gets thrown away, or whatever, don't worry. You can always access a copy of your syllabus right here from your course homepage. So if I click on Course Syllabus, so it's going to load up that document, and it's going to tell me everything that I'll need for the course. It tells me all the course materials I need, tells me my course prereqs, tells me what uh, I can expect from the instructor, as well as what the instructor expects from me. Quite often, your syllabus will also contain a, a brief course schedule, which will sort of give you an idea as to how your course is going to be laid out through the semester, so you can know what to expect and what's coming up. So to get back to that course homepage, if I click on Course right here at the top of the screen, that will return me back to the course homepage. The next thing the instructor wants us to do is to check the course mail. The instructor says that there's a message in there. Let's respond to it. So if I click on View Inbox, this will take me into the course mail environment. A couple of things to know. First, the course mail is not associated with any particular email address. It is an internal system email. So there's no email address you have to remember for your instructor, and there is no um, way that anybody else could hack into it from an outside system, which is always nice to know. So to read your email, first I have a, a the email listed here and I have the subject line and the interface is very similar to any uh, web-based email program that you may have used. So I'm just going to click on the subject here, Welcome to Mercer Online, and you'll see here is the email from my instructor. I say welcome, it looks like you were able to successfully access your course mail, congratulations. Now let me know that you got this message, blah, 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 blah. And basically the instructor is saying, don't just hit reply to respond to this message, actually send me a brand new message. So this way the instructor knows that you know how to compose a message inside of Angel. The instructor wants to know that you can send them a message using the Angel email interface. So. Let's go back to the inbox and do this. So to go back, we click on Back to Inbox. And to compose a new message, it's very simple. Click on the button that says Compose Message. And this will load up a new window. And in the top portion of the screen, you'll see a box where you would typically type in an email address. Well, like I said earlier, there is no email address to remember. So there's nothing really to type in here. So how do you figure out who you're sending it to? It's very simple. You click on the To button over to the left of that box, and then from the screen that pops up, you're going to select your recipients. So what I always recommend is just click on all members, and this will show you everybody who is enrolled in your course. And your instructor is always going to be the one listed as the course editor. So if I just put a checkbox to the left of my teacher's name and click the To button, you'll see that now it's been populated over here on the right-hand side of the screen. So I click OK. And now you'll see at the top, I have my instructor's name listed as a recipient. The next thing to do is enter in a subject for the email. The 
you enter in a subject and you have to have a subject line inside of email and angel you should really always have a subject line in email anyway and also your subject line should never be the entire body of your email subject should just be a little bit of information and then the actual message goes into the body part don't be one of those people that put your whole message into the subject line that's not cool either so anyway I'm gonna type in my message to the instructor So once you've typed your message into the body, you're ready to send it. To send, simply click on the button that says send, and away it goes. If you want to double check and make sure your message has been sent, you can always click on to sent right over here on the left hand side in the system folders section, and you'll see right here is the message that we just sent to our instructor. So we're going to go back to the course homepage by clicking on course here at the top of the screen. And the next thing the instructor wants us to do is to go into the Lessons tab and review the materials in the Start Here folder. Then they want us to go and provide an introdu introduction of ourselves in the discussion forum. And then lastly, they want us to complete the activities inside of the Module 1 folder. So we're going to go ahead and do all of those things. So first, we're going to click on Lessons. The lesson section contains the heart and soul or the meat and potatoes of your course. This is where all of the real course content is going to be housed. And the first thing the instructor wants us to do is go into the Start Here folder and poke around. So I clicked on Start Here, and then I'm going to click on Getting Around in Your Online Class, and I'm going to click on Breadcrumbs because I want to show you something. So you'll notice here at the top of the screen where I'm pointing, as I moved along, a new level appeared right up here in this line of links. These are called breadcrumbs, and they're great for navigation because you can move back one level or two levels without having to hit the back button on your browser. Because the way Angel is built, it's built on a series of frames, and I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of technical details, but I'll tell you this much. Sometimes inside of Angel, if you hit the back button, it won't work. And if you're anything like me, you will hit the back button 40 freaking times if it doesn't work the first time. Then, lo and behold, you're going to be somewhere where you didn't want to be. So, secret is, don't use the back button. Just use the breadcrumbs here at the top. So if I want to go back to the Start Here folder, I would just click on Start Here. And if I want to go back to the Lessons, I would just click on Lessons, either here in the breadcrumbs or here at the tab at the top of the screen. And that's how it works. So the next thing the instructor wants us to do is introduce ourselves in the discussion forum. So a discussion forum is basically the way that you're going to do the interaction with your instructor and with your classmates in your online course. The instructor will post a prompt or directions for the discussion forum and then they'll ask you to respond to that prompt uh, and to respond to your peers as well in the forum so you'll notice up here at the top I have the directions welcome to the class take time to introduce yourself blah 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 some information about that and um, so that's what the instructor wants you to do they want you to post your own introduction as well as respond to at least one posting by one of your classmates so to read a post inside of the discussion forum you simply click on the post title here I have one that says, who is Professor Batcave J Teacher? If I click on that, you'll see I have a picture of my instructor. And then I have an introduction from the instructor. So I'm Batcave J Teacher. I'm your instructor. I've been teaching online for five years. I have a lot of animals, 13 dogs, 9 cats, 8 goldfish, 3 horses, 2 iguanas, and a dolphin. I enjoy skydiving, race car driving, an alligator, wrestling, and I volunteer at a soup kitchen. A busy, busy character is your instructor. So if you want to respond to your instructor's post, just come down to the bottom of the screen and click on the reply link. Then, inside of the reply box, you're going to type in your response to your instructor. So I've typed in my response here to the instructor. It says, hi, it's awesome. I love animals, too. I have a hermit crab named Shelly. And sign my name. So I'm ready to submit my message to the discussion forum. So I just click on the submit button, and away it goes. And now you'll see, here's that original post from the instructor, followed by my response to the instructor's post. So the next thing we want to do is show you how to create your own brand new post into the discussion forum. And to do that, it's very simple. Just click on the new post button. And this is going to bring up the prompts where you will complete the post. So first, you enter the post title. And I'm going to just say, hi, from Johnny Student. And then in here, this is where you're going to enter the body of your post. Okay, so once you've typed in your message, you're ready to submit it. But before I do that, I want to talk to you about a couple of other things. First, inside of your discussion forum, don't type in all caps. 
Typing in all, all caps is the moral equivalent of screaming. And let's don't scream at our classmates, okay? Let's have good discussions and try to avoid being mean and yelling at each other. Also, doing emoticons or doing those little text ease abbreviation things that we all do is not cool inside of an online course. You need to spell things out. The word you is spelled E W E if you're referring to a sheep. If you're using the second person pronoun, it's Y O U. But the letter U means neither of those things. So don't use the letter U if you mean the word U inside of your online course. Uh, this stuff is critical. Remember, you're in an academic environment, so you need to behave like it. Don't use your text speak. Don't use your emoticons. Don't type in all caps. And if you're typing something that's going to take a long time inside of your discussion forum, type it inside of your word processor first. Then copy and paste your work into the discussion forum and submit it. Because what will happen sometimes if it's summertime or if it's wintertime or whatever time of the year, maybe the power will blink at your house for one reason or another, say a thunderstorm or a snowstorm or God forbid a hurricane comes through and you lose power and you're right there working inside of your online class. Well, if you're typing inside of your browser and you lose power, then you also lose your work and you don't want that to happen. So type your work up inside of your uh, word processor, save your work, and then copy and paste it into the discussion forum and post it that way. This way you don't lose your work and you also benefit from the spelling check and the grammar check that your word processor provides. So just some helpful tips for you as you uh, work in the discussion forums. And once you've typed your pose, once you've got everything in there, you've done your spell check, everything is groovy, you're ready to go, just click on the submit button and away it goes. So now you'll see we have a threaded discussion here. I have the post that we just created. I have the original post from the instructor. And then underneath that, I have our response that we submitted to the instructor. And that is the discussion forum. So I'm going to click back on Lessons, and the last thing I want to show you is Module 1. What's a module? Well, inside of your online course, all of your content is going to be arranged in modules or units or chapters or sections. So they all mean basically the same thing. It's just a different word uh, to denote one unit of work. So here we have Module 1, and at the top of the screen we have a little introduction as to what uh, the instructor wants you to do. And then you have the objectives. This is the stuff that you'll accomplish. You have links to videos. You have interactive presentations, PDF documents, uh, an external link on how to um, apply techniques to apply questions to ask when evaluating web pages, another discussion forum. And then we have here a Dropbox. I want to show you this real quick. We talked about how the discussion forum is where you and your classmates interact with one another and where you submit responses to each other. But what if you want to submit something privately to the instructor? That's what the Dropbox is for. So here I have a Dropbox and the instructor has given us all the instructions and I'm ready to submit my work. So to do it, I enter my title and I'm calling it Brilliant Essay. Okay, and I've typed in my message to the instructor. Now remember, this is not where you're going to type your paper in. This is just for any notes that you have to your instructor. What you're going to do, you're actually going to attach your work to this assignment Dropbox. So to do that, you click on the Attachments button, and this is going to load up this little file browser thingy. So I click on the Browse button, and now I'm going to go and find my work. And so here I've got my uh, work that I'm submitting. I click on Open, and I hit Upload. And now you'll see here is the file that I've uploaded. So then I hit the finished button, but I'm not quite finished yet. It just means I'm finished uploading the file. I'm not finished with my work yet. So you'll see here's my attachment. My file has been attached. And I hit the submit button, and away it goes. And I click OK. And you'll see if I scroll down the page here, there is my work. There's my brilliant essay. And it also shows me the date and time that I submitted. Everything you do inside of your online course carries a date time stamp. So your instructor has sort of Santa Claus powers. You know, they see you when they're sl you're sleeping. They know when you're awake. So your instructor knows when you're doing your work and when you're not doing your work, when you're logging in and when you're not logging in. So don't try and snow your instructor and say something like, dude, I submitted that last Thursday, man. Because they can always log in and look and see exactly what you hit, when you hit it, etc. in your online course. So I've submitted that. I want to go back into Module 1.
And the last thing I want to do is take a quiz. I'm going to show you how the quiz tool works. I click on module one quiz. And once I've clicked on this, it's going to give me the brief introduction to it. It tells me my instructions. I have 100 points value, one attempt, I have 15 minutes to get it done. Now, if you have a quiz or a test that has a time limit on it, make sure that you're going to have that time available to yourself. Don't start a quiz that's going to take 45 minutes when you know you've only got 10 minutes available. Make sure that you're going to have that time. Make sure it's going to be quiet. You're going to be in a good setting where you can take the test. Once you know everything's cool, you're going to have your time. You click the Begin Now button. And it's going to remind you again the assessment's time limited. Hit the Continue button. And over on the right-hand side, you'll see there's a little counter that's going to be up there. If you need to, put a post-it note over the top of that so you're not staring at it the whole time you're trying to take your quiz. That's fine. But just be mindful that's going to be up there the whole time you're taking your test. And so then you just go through and you answer your questions. Um, and you see we have like multiple select, like our mul all, select all that apply, more than one correct answer, true, false questions, multiple choice questions, uh, ordering. So like here I've got an ordering question. So I'm going to do this one, two, three, five, and six. And then also like a matching uh, questions. So here I've got this and matching the icons with their websites. All right, I'm ready to go. I've answered all of my questions. Oops, there we go. If I answered all my questions, I'm ready to go. I hit the submit button. It says, are you sure you want to do this? I click OK. And you notice, if you didn't notice before, I did skip question number one. That was so I could show you this. If you do skip a question on a test, Angel will come up and say, hey, wait a minute, before you move on, are you sure you want to submit this? You didn't answer this question. So make sure you read your instructions. It says here, click OK to submit the assessment or cancel to answer these questions. So I want to go back and answer that question. I click cancel. And I'm going to select my answer, which is the following is secure web transfer protocol. That's HTTPS. I scroll back down the page. I hit the submit button. And again, it says, are you sure you want to do this? I click OK. And voila, I have scored 100 on my test. Yay, me. So once you're done, you can review your answer, see what you got right, see what you got wrong. Scroll all the way down, click Continue, and that'll take you back to the instructions page and also show you when, again, your date and time stamp for when you submitted your work uh, and your score. So the last thing I want to show you is how to log out of the online course environment. If you have a brother or sister or you have... Uh, wife or girlfriend or roommate or a little cousin or anybody who might be accessing your computer, you want to make sure you log out of your course whenever you're done. So to log out, if you look over here on the left hand side of the screen, I have a series of five buttons. First button, if I click on that, that takes me back to the home page, the page that we saw right after we logged in. Second button is a help button, which will bring up a, a separate help menu with all sorts of answers and stuff in it. And the third button right down here, this is the one I wanted to bring your attention to. This is the log off button. This is how you log off of your online course. To log off, you click on this button. It's going to say, are you sure you want to do that? You click OK, and then you will be logged out of the online course environment. That's very important. Every time you've finished your work inside of your online course, make sure you log out, then close your browser or your browser tab. And so that's it. That is this orientation presentation. If you do encounter any issues, you have any problems, contact us at 609-570-3389. Or better yet, send us an email at mercerline at mccc.edu. We're here to help, and we hope you have a great semester. Good luck.